If you've never tried coding in a non-graphical text editor before, Helix just might be the perfect on-ramp into that world. And if you're an experienced user of non-graphical text editors, Helix brings some refreshing elements to the table that are worth at least checking out. It's pretty well known that non-graphical text editors that free from the mouse can be more productive and ergonomic than their graphical counterparts like VS Code and IntelliJ. But making the jump from a graphical editor can be pretty daunting for two main reasons. Number one, because you have to learn the key bindings, which is kind of unavoidable because that's the whole point. Number two is the initial configuration of the editor to get it to do what you're trying to do with it. This is where Helix shines. With Vim and NeoVim, it's kind of expected that you're gonna copy someone else's configuration when you're starting out, just because it's so hard to make sense of which plugins do what. Helix works out of the box with most major languages without any configuration. There is some minimal configuration that I think most Helix users will want when they're starting out, but it's on the order of a few lines of configuration as opposed to hundreds of lines potentially with Vim or NeoVim. Let's take a quick tour of Helix and see how it compares to something like Vim or NeoVim. On a Mac, you just need to do brew install Helix to install Helix. And then once you've installed Helix, the executable is actually called HX. Let's start with the most important part of any editor, which is obviously themes. So this is the default one. It's got like a purple background and it's very minimalist and non-contrasty. Blueberry, Sonokai, Everforest Dark, Bogster, Ingrid, Flat White, Dracula, Grubbox, Solarized Dark, Dark Plus, AYU Mirage, Rose Pine Moon. Anyway, you get the idea. There's pretty much something for everyone here. Let's talk about modes. And the modes for Helix are pretty similar to the modes for Vim. It's got insert mode, visual mode, and normal mode, but it's also got some other modes like space mode, go to mode, and match mode. The first thing you're probably gonna wanna do when you open Helix for the first time is open a file. And Helix comes with a nice built-in file picker that's a little bit like the telescope plugin for NeoVim. So if I do space mode, and you'll notice with some of the modes in Helix, you get a nice menu with a reference guide with all the subcommands for that mode. So in space mode, we can see F is opening the file picker. So we do space F, and now, like I said, we get a file picker, kind of like telescope. We get a nice preview on the right side of the picker. We can do control P and control N to cycle through the files. And then we get a fuzzy finder. So we can type in main and we can see main.rs comes up and we can open that by pressing enter. Other things to note, you can, if I wanna open the cargo.toml in a separate visual split. I can highlight cargo.toml in the picker and then do control V and that opens it in a vertical split. You do start out in normal mode, just like you do in Vim. Uh, to go into insert mode, type I, you can start typing stuff, very similar to Vim. You get into visual mode by typing V, just like you do with Vim, so I can select whatever I want. One of the biggest differences from Vim is that you can make selections in normal mode. You don't necessarily have to be in visual mode. So if I type W, it's actually gonna highlight the word. In Vim, it would just jump to the next word. In Helix, typing W highlights the current word. So we'll cycle through the words on line 15 here, and you'll see as we highlight each word, the previous selection gets removed when we make that new selection. And that's the main distinction between normal mode and visual mode. If I type V to be in visual mode and I try to do the same thing, and I do W, 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 you can see instead of removing the previous selection, it appends onto that previous selection. And that's mainly what visual mode is for. If we wanna make a bunch of selections all at once. The other thing you probably notice is that I get syntax highlighting right out of the box for this simple Rust program. And I didn't install any plugins to do this. You get this right out of the box thanks to Helix's built-in LSP support. In terms of moving around, a lot of the key bindings are the same as Vim and NeoVim. For example, J is to go down one character, K is to go up one character, L is to go right, and H is to go left. Those are pretty much the same. To go forward a word, it's W. To go back a word, it's B. Not all the key bindings are the same as Vim, and if you do wanna change the key bindings, you have to do so in the config.toml file, which is, by default, it's in your home directory, slash dot config, slash helix, slash config.toml, and you can see I have a section called keys.normal, and that refers to key bindings that apply in normal mode. I have three key bindings here in sort of a JSON-like format. If I press backspace R, it's gonna run cargo run, which is pretty handy. If I press backspace S, it's gonna save the configuration and reload it. And then if I press backspace C, it's gonna open this configuration file. So those are kind of handy to have. The Helix mindset is that we always highlight something before we perform an action on that thing. If I'm in Vim and I wanna erase everything up until this L here in this hello world line, I could do DTL, oops, and it didn't delete exactly what I expected because I didn't realize that there was an L prior to the L that I was targeting. And so I, I mean, I can press dot, 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 redo the command over and over again until I get what I want but you can see how not highlighting something before you perform an action can lead to mistakes. And that's where Helix's approach shines. So instead of doing DTL, so when I do TL, 
I see that it highlights up until the first L. So at that point, I realize I've made a mistake instead of having to perform the action to actually realize that I've made a mistake. In Helix, I can do Alt dot to redo the previous command. So now I have what I want. This highlighting by default is really nice in situations where, for example, you wanna go back a word and delete that word. In Vim, you'd have to do B and then something like DIW to delete the word. So that operation can be a lot more efficient in Helix. If I do wanna remove the highlight, so I wanna do W and then I wanna insert something here, I can just press semicolon and then I can start my insert. Visual mode is pretty similar to Vim. So to enter visual mode, I press V and then I can start moving to the right, moving down wherever I want. And I can use similar commands to Vim to modify what I've highlighted. If I wanna replace it and enter insert mode, I press C and I can start typing. Um, if I want to just delete it, I can press D. So in that sense, it's very similar to Vim's visual mode. Once I have something highlighted, I can do something called select by pressing S. And select is basically a search within the selected text. So I can search for, say, the letter O. And then I can actually do a find and replace, basically. So I just do C and then replace it with whatever letter I want, so A. So now I've replaced all the O's in the selected text with the letter A. And now I have multiple cursors. If I want to get rid of the multiple cursors, I can just press comma. And now I'm back to one cursor. The T and F motions are very similar to the way things work in Vim. If I want to highlight up to a character and including that character, I can do FD. So that highlights all the way up to D and including D. The big difference between the way the T and F motions work in Helix and the way they work in Vim is that in Helix, they're not isolated to the current line like they are in Vim. In Vim, if I put my cursor on the H and I do FN, it doesn't do anything because there's no N to the right of the cursor on this line. But in Helix, if I put my cursor on the H and I do FN, it highlights up into the N on the subsequent line because the F motion is not isolated to the current line that you're on. So that's a critical difference to be aware of, even though at first the T and F motions seem pretty similar to Vim. In Vim, if I wanna copy or yank something, there's two popular options. One is to highlight, for example, an entire line by using Shift V, and then I can do Y, and then I can paste that using the P key, or I can do YY to yank an entire line and then do P, or I can highlight just some text, yank it, and do P. In Helix, typically we're always highlighting something before we yank it or copy it. So if I wanna highlight an entire line in normal mode, I can do that with X, and subsequent presses of X will highlight the subsequent lines, I can yank that by pressing Y, and then of course paste that by pressing P. So basically Y and P work very similar to the way they work in Vim. There's just some subtle differences in terms of you having to highlight things before you can perform those operations. One of the most useful family of motions in Helix is sort of these syntax or language aware motions that I think you can do in Vim, but I think it requires some plugins. If I wanna move to the next function and highlight that entire function, I can do right bracket F. To go to the previous function, I can do left bracket F. So I can do things like right bracket F and then repeat that same motion by doing alt dot. And I can effectively cycle through all my functions using those motions. If I wanna go to the previous class or in Rust, that would be a struct, I can do left bracket C and that'll go to the previous struct or class. If I wanna cycle through all function parameters and arguments, I can do right bracket A and again, alt dot, and that'll cycle through function parameters and arguments. That can come in really handy. Now let's talk about space mode. And space mode has some really interesting features. To enter space mode, I just press space, and then I can do things like open a symbol picker. That'll give me a list of all the symbols in my current file, and I open that with S. So I can see all the symbols in my file here on the left, and I can cycle through them with Control N and Control P. Um, I can jump to whichever one I want. And then if I wanna look at symbols in my entire workspace, I can do space capital S, and that'll give me all the symbols in my workspace. You can see on the left, I have other thing, which is in the current file. And then I also have thing, which is in a separate file. I can open that in a separate vertical split by using control V, bam, I'm there. In space mode, I can also rename a symbol. So if I wanted to rename other function to something else, I can do space R and then other FN two and you can see it renamed the function itself and the reference to it on this line to other FN2. That's pretty cool. Again, nothing you can't do in Vim, but that's how you do it in Helix. Space mode is also where you can apply code action suggestions from the LSP. So if I remove this lifetime here, save, and I highlight the ampersand here, and I do space A to get the code actions, I can see this list of 
suggested actions from the LSP. I can scroll through them using Control N and P, and I can select this one, consider using the apostrophe A lifetime, bam, and it applies it automatically. Another useful mode in Helix is go to mode, which I enter by pressing G. And again, I get a nice list of sub commands in the go to mode. I can do things like go to the line start by pressing H. I can do things like go to the line end by pressing L. And then more importantly, I can do things like go to definition by pressing D. So if I highlight thing here, which is in a separate file, I can do GD and I'm there. I jump right to that file. There's something called jump points in Helix as well. So if I'm bouncing around to different definitions, every time I jump to something different, it creates a jump point and I can cycle through those jump points by using control O and control I. So if I wanted to go back to where I came from when I did go to definition of thing, I can do control O and I'm back to where I came from. If I'm in that file containing the thing struct, I can look at all the places where thing is referenced by doing GR and I get a nice list of all the places thing is referenced. And I can cycle through them again using control N and P. So that's kind of nice. I can press enter on one and I'm there. I'm at the place where that thing is referenced. Another really cool motion that I really like using is capital R. And capital R replaces the currently selected text with the thing that you yanked. So if I do E and then yank the string thing, and then I go down and I highlight the string world, I can do shift R and hello thing. So that's a really handy way to replace some text with something you've yanked. In Vim, to do the same thing out of the box, you'd have to do something like YIW, yank inner word, and then you'd have to go down to world and do visual mode, inner word, and then P to paste. So the Helix equivalent of that is a lot more ergonomic. Another cool feature of Helix is registers, and you can use registers as a place to yank text into and paste text out of. So I can yank the string thing into some arbitrary register to specify the register that I wanna yank it into. I do double quote and then any letter on the keyboard, I can do M for example. So now I've specified the register M and I press Y to yank into register M and I see that that's happened on the bottom of the screen here. Now to paste something out of that register, I can specify the register by doing double quote M and then I can just press P and I paste it from that register. So registers can be really handy if you have a bunch of pieces of common text that you wanna be able to paste wherever you need them. That's a quick taste of what Helix feels like to use. Obviously I didn't even come close to covering every feature, but that'll give you a feel for what it's like. And I do think it's worth checking out if you've been using Vim for a while and you're looking for something a little different, or if you're in the graphical world and you're looking for an on-ramp to the non-graphical text editors, this is a pretty good place to start, I think. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.